About two weeks ago, I built a sawmill I called the Mini Urban Sawmill. It was a small form factor mill that used one inch steel tubing and I welded all the parts together. Now for a cutter head, I used a circular saw with a chainsaw attachment. It's called a beam saw. It just attaches right to the circular saw and it worked really well. But I wanted to take it a step further and see if I could build something very functional, had a small form, and could be built out of regular construction grade material. Because let's face it, not everybody works with steel or has the equipment to work with steel. For this sawmill, I used two 2x10s that were six foot long. I ripped one of them down to two and three quarter inch sections, and then I built this really simple frame. With the frame made, I took the other 2x10 and cut two lengths off of it that were 17 and 3 quarter inches long. Now these two pieces are going to act like towers on the side of the frame that I just made. Now these towers need to stick down below the frame 5 inches and past the frame or towards the front of the frame 2.5 inches. So I got them in the position I wanted, clamped it all together so they would stay while I ran some screws in to hold this whole thing together. And I repeated this process on the opposite side of the frame. So with the frame and towers together, I needed to create this track or guide for the solder ride down. So I ripped down a piece of laminated panel I had laying around the shop at an angle. So there's an angle on the top of it. And then I cut it so it was just about, oh, three quarter of an inch shy of the distance between the two towers. Well, this will allow for that panel to rock back and forth in between the two towers so I can adjust the height of it as I need to. Now I put a second piece on to kind of create a groove for that track to ride up and down and then making sure that it wasn't so tight that it would be difficult to move. And then added a base plate to the saw. Now the base plate has an angle on it that matches the top of the track. So the first thing I did was just cut out a section of that for the saw blade or the chainsaw blade and the riving knife to stick through. Once I had the hole cut, I set it in place and then marked on the back where it touched the edge of the saw base and then trimmed it off to that length. Now to attach this to the saw base, I'm just clamping it in position and I'm going to drill a couple of holes right through the base that I can run some 3 8 bolts in. In hindsight, I should have used carriage bolts, but this is what I had in the shop. So it's what I used. Now there was a little bit of slop at the bottom. So to get rid of that, I just used a block of wood and uh, screwed through it. And that kind of clamped the, the slop out, if that makes sense. And then with the angle set on the track, it slides really nice and easy down. Now, because I made the slide out of three quarter inch material, I want to add some rigidity to it and I did that by installing a 2x4 along the back of the slide and then to clamp this thing in position when it's on the sawmill I added some auxiliary blocks and then drilled a 7 16 hole through it and tapped it out with half inch thread that way I could just stick a half inch bolt in it and when it's on the sawmill it acts like a clamp on those slides on the tower and then all I had to do was set it up. So I used my three-legged sawhorses I built in another video and slid the guide into place and then just tightened the bolts down and that locks it in. Now I did, didn't show it in the video, but I added some two-inch increment measurements on the back side of there so I didn't have to measure it each time. I could just move it to my lines or roughly to the line to make the cut. Mm -hmm. 
So I had some uh, pine logs I picked up the other day. Now these are about two years old and they have a little bit of a dry rot around the edges of them, but there was some good material in the center. So I figured I'd go ahead and mill them up anyway and see how it went. Now the chainsaw attachment doesn't have uh, oiler on it. And I was thinking about adding like a drip oiler, but it's really, that's a lot of messing around for something so simple. So I just attached a little cup with some chainsaw bar lube oil and about every oh, three feet or so I would stop and add a little touch of oil to the chainsaw and that uh, worked great. Now I'm not uh, proficient at this. I don't know much about you know chainsaw mills. But what I found really interesting was that it cut slower through the rot wood or the dry wood on the outside than it did through the center wood if there was the, the fresh center wood cut really well. Now here's a shot of it in real time just so you can kind of get an idea about the real actual speed of this thing. And at this point I'm cutting through a solid 11 inches of, of pine at this point. And it had no problem. Now one of the things I can't really show in the video is I am really uh, pushing on this thing. Not nah, not right here. In an upcoming clip I've actually pushed really hard on it. I want to see if I can like get the saw blade to stop. In other words create enough pressure that there's not enough torque from the saw to stop it. Um, I couldn't. I was literally pushing it so hard that I thought I was going to knock over the whole sawmill and the saw blade did not stop. The, the circular saw just kept the torque going right through with everything and it was, it was pretty incredible. Now recently I picked up a worm drive saw that I'm going to you know attach to one of these beam saws and try that but to be honest with you I don't think it's really necessary. Um, with that little experiment I did, just putting as much effort as I could into this, I could not stall out the saw, so uh, this has plenty of power to do a 12 or 14 inch log. I was really happy with the results. I mean, this thing is so simple. It's just a, a frame, two towers, and a track for the saw to ride down, and it just worked wonderfully. So all in all, it took a little bit over 20 minutes to mill up this log. Uh, not too long at all. I got a little faster at it after I'd used it a little bit. It took a little time to kind of get used to it. But once that, once I did, I was milling logs up like crazy. In fact, I didn't get the video done yesterday because I was having so much fun playing with this thing. So well, some of you may have noticed in the video, I added a handle back here. And that was just, that just made it a lot easier to control. You can get some force behind it when you're pushing it through. It's a little bit awkward holding the trigger, trigger with this hand and then trying to, you know, push down here with the other hand. This just made it a lot easier and it felt a lot safer. So I was really just thrilled to pieces with the way this thing worked. And I will have plans available for this. They're not there on the site yet, but in the next couple of days, they will be. So if you want to check it, izzyswan.com in a few days, they'll be up there on the free plans page. And also, I know some of you who've been following me for quite a while have lately been seeing, at the beginning of the video, I say sponsored by Izzy Swan's Toolmasters Association. And the Toolmasters Association is something new that I'm doing. Uh, I'm kind of, it's kind of my answer to Patreon. It's a way for viewers to support what I'm doing, but not only that, but for me to really give back a whole lot to the viewers as well for helping support the channel. So I've approached a bunch of tool companies. Uh, right now we're about 18 and I've got eight added to the members association already and we're adding the other 10 over the next few weeks. Now these tool companies are gonna give discounts on products that they carry to people who join the Tool Masters Association. And some of them are fairly significant discounts, anywhere from five to 15 and upwards of that. We're gonna do special deals every month. Well, I'm talking like Black Friday kind of pricing. And we're gonna do a lot more than that. We'll be doing you know, sporting events, uh, giveaways, tickets. Some of these sporting events I'll be going to like um, sprint car races, uh, tractor pulls, all kinds of really fun stuff and much, much more. So if you want to like to check that out and learn a little bit more what that's about, I'll put a link right here so you can go check that out. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support over the last few years. 2016 has been a great year. I expect 2017 to be much better. I look forward to seeing you then.